Hello world, boyfriend, back again with another pickup video. Girlfriend's sneaking away right now. Uh, so this hopefully won't be too long. It is for the Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2015 pickup video edition. I said that backwards. Anyway, uh, got a lot of stuff to get through, a lot of stories I wanna tell along the way, so let's just jump right into it. Uh, first thing I wanna show is actually the last thing I picked up, and that is for uh, Game Boy Advance. It's actually the Cartoon Network video collection. Uh, I was always curious uh, as to the quality of these, video, uh, yeah, these videos, because there's several games. I think it's a neat little part of the Game Boy Advance um, history. Uh, and as expected, the quality was terrible, but I still think it's a fun little addition to the collection. I actually got it at the very end of the day. Uh, I, let's see, I think I, I, it was marked at $5. I don't usually talk about prices, but this is fine. I walked up and I was like, I'll give you a buck for that. And he's like, two bucks and you got a deal. And I was like, all right, here you go. So anyway, uh, that was the last thing I picked up. This next thing, now, when I was at the convention, uh, right as you walk in the door, there was this giant bin, just huge, full of all this stuff. And how it worked was you paid five bucks, you got a bag, a plastic bag, regular plastic bag, and as much as you could stuff in the bag, you got for five dollars. Now, bit of a tricky situation because you got a million people going in at the same time, digging through, and people are going for games, but it's all just kind of crap games, sports, and all, all that stuff. Uh, so... What do you what do you look for when you're in these bins? Well, I think I think I did all right, and I will see. Here's my um, this isn't the bag I use, but this is the bag that's got all the stuff in it. Uh, but I think I did all right. So first off, uh, I grabbed uh, this little uh, wall hanging kind of uh, uh, game <laughs> thing. <laughs> what do you call this thing? Uh, it, it's for Atari games or uh, ColecoVision games, but it's a nice little wall mount. Um, and I actually, I don't even have an Atari uh, 2600, but I grabbed a couple games. Just, I saw them and I was like, eh, might as well grab them. I got Asteroids and uh, Warlords. So uh, those are my first Atari games that I own. And let's see, see, you just put it in like that. And they come in and out, kind of like a, a cassette um, holder thing that you hang on the wall. So anyway, I got that. Um, and here's a little tip. Grab AC adapters or any sort of um, wires that you can think of because uh, these things are really good trade bait or you can sell them, you can upsell them for a lot. So I got uh, a Sega adapter. I got um, just kind of a, a basic uh, generic adapter but it's got the end, it's kind of neat, it's got the end for uh, NES or a Super Nintendo. Um, I got a Super Nintendo adapter, um, again another kind of generic adapter, all different volts, uh, voltage and hertz and watts and all that, um, and I, oh, here's another one, yeah, another generic one, and I actually had more, but I traded uh, them to Pat the NES Punk, and I'll show you what I traded in just a sec, but let's finish going through what I got in the $5 bin. Uh, I got a six button Sega controller right there. That's like five bucks alone. So that was a good find. Uh, I got an Atari uh, 2600 controller. I actually got two of those. Um, I grabbed a PS1 controller. I'm a big fan of the ones without the analog sticks. Uh, I like the feel of them. They're, they're light and uh, yeah. And I grabbed a PlayStation 1 controller with the analog sticks. I uh, got an Atari Flashback 2. Now, I have no idea. I haven't tested it. I don't know if it works. It's got something jiggling around inside, but uh, we'll give it a go and uh, see if that works. I grabbed a third-party GameCube controller. It actually feels pretty good. The buttons are all nice, so uh, I thought, why not? GameCube controller. And then, uh, last two things. I got a DS light charger. Um, somewhere along the line, girlfriend and I, we lost... Uh, one of our DS chargers, so I picked up another one. And then uh, I got the RCA cables for Nintendo. Now this is great because these are compatible with GameCube and Super Nintendo. And these things are very finicky. I already have one that broke, so uh, the, these things are hard to come by. Pick them up if you can. And that was all I got. 
Uh, for the $5 bin, like I said, I had a few more power adapters that I traded to Pat the NES Punk. And why don't we just show um, what I traded for. I got one of his wristbands. Yeah, all right. So um, uh, I wanted two, but he said, I'll do one. Actually, he, he allowed me to do two, but I did the nice thing. And I was like, you know what? I'll let you sell it. I just want one. What am I going to do with two? I only need one. Uh, so let's do some some clothing stuff now since we're into wristbands. Obviously, I am wearing this uh, wonderful Portland Retro Gaming 10. It was the 10th year um, edition t-shirt, uh, which was Back to the Future themed because it's the 30th anniversary of Back to the Future. So there was a lot of Back to the Future stuff going on. In fact, they did a cosplay contest and there was this group of people that dressed up as every carnation of Marty in uh, the trilogy of films. So any... Uh, time he has a costume change, they had everyone. So like when he was in the 50s with the leather jacket and the glasses and the fedora, they had the Enchantment Under the Sea dance where he's playing the guitar. Uh, they had uh, where he's wearing the yellow suit, you know, and pretending he's Darth Vader from Planet Vulcan. It was really cool. And uh, I think they might have won the cosplay contest. It was, uh, it was pretty, uh, yeah, I, I, I never saw who won that. But anyway, um, speaking of Marty and Back to the Future, I got this awesome Back to the Future 2 hat, the uh, one that Marty wears in the future in 2015 um, in part two. And I had been meaning to get one of these. I, I missed getting out, I, I missed getting one of these last year and I decided to pull the trigger and get one this year. So there is that. Uh, and then I also got a couple more shirts. I got a Cinemassacre shirt, big fan of James the Angry Video Game Nerd and uh, all his other shows that you see there on the back, hopefully. Um, but yeah, so that was cool. I was wearing that around the convention one day. And then I got, uh, if you, uh, I'm sure can see behind me, I got this uh, Krang shirt. So I love it because it's got, you know, it's uh, got Krang right over your belly, which is um, like how it is in, in uh, the cartoon show, which I thought was really funny. I saw John Riggs was actually wearing uh, one of those shirts, and I was like, where did you get that? I, I gotta get that shirt, and it was at the convention, so I went and uh, I picked it up. Uh, and then I got a couple more YouTuber-related items. Uh, again, going back to the Pat the NES Punk wristband. Um, game Sack was there, and I got a Game Sack sticker, so if you went to the panel, they were just handing out uh, Game Sack stickers. I actually really wanted to get a Game Sack t-shirt, um, but they sold out like right away. I didn't realize that it was going to be such a hot item. I guess I should have guessed that, but uh, they ran out, so I was bummed I didn't get to get a game sack shirt. Uh, and then finally, I got this. Uh, these things are cool. Um, I got these Superstars of 2015 Video Game and Pinball Trading Cards. Now, Walter Day, who uh, runs Twin Galaxies, which you might have seen in King of Kong, uh, he makes these trading cards for uh, video game enthusiasts. Pretty, pretty neat. Uh, this is John Lester, so that's Gamester81. Last year I picked up Arcade Impossible's trading card, and uh, I'm amazed that I was able to get this and get it home in like perfect condition without bending it or anything. So anyway, Gamester81, uh, that was his trading card. And then this is the badge for this year, the badge and the lanyard, uh, which is just fun to show. Um, these are neat. Okay, uh, moving along here, I think we're doing pretty good. Let's do some Nintendo Powers. Now, I wasn't uh, going crazy on Nintendo Powers. A, because they're bulky and they're hard to carry, and um, B, I just had other things in mind that I wanted to get, but if I saw some Nintendo Powers for the right price, uh, I figured I, I would pick them up, and I did. I got a few of them, so let's go through those. Uh, I got Volume 48 with Batman Returns on the cover, um, and this was... Uh, one of the few that I needed, I'm trying to get the first 100 issues, and I'm getting down there. I only have a few left, and that was the lowest numbered one that I needed. Uh, next lowest number one I needed was issue 57 with Bugs Bunny's Rabbit Rampage on the uh, cover. Um, and these are all complete. I would not purchase them. They weren't complete. Uh, next number up I needed was 78, and that's got, uh, what is that, Mortal Kombat 3 on the cover. Uh, and then I got just a couple more. I got volume 97 with uh, Clay Fighter 63 and a third on the front. And then this was a good find. I thought this was a good, I got this for a steal. I got this for like two bucks, I think, two or three bucks. Um, complete, perfect condition, and that is issue 100. So uh, 
for whatever reason, this is not a very easy one to track down. So that was an awesome steal. But the best deal I got as far as Nintendo Power is concerned was I was walking past this one booth. Uh, I saw a stack of them, loose stack, just kind of sitting on top of this case. It looked kind of uh, like like the ratty old damaged ones. And to be fair, it is it does have a, a fair share of um, wear and tear to it. Uh, but I asked the guy, I said, how much do you want for this? And he said, oh gosh, um, how about a buck? <laughs> I couldn't have thrown a buck at him faster than I did. Uh, because I got number six of the Nintendo Fun Club News. Now, this is what preceded Nintendo Power. There was only seven issues, and these things are not uh, easy to come by. So when I saw this, uh, yeah, I jumped on it right away, and a dollar, what a great deal. Like I said, it's, it's got some wear and tear to it, but uh, I can always upgrade it uh, if I find another one in the future. And so that was all I got for Nintendo Powers. Uh, now we're starting to get to the good stuff. Uh, one of the YouTubers that I met up with and hung out with for a little bit was Terry and Tyler Hunt, who you might know as Luigi Freakout123. Now, we got them, uh, a girlfriend and I, for Super Derek's um, Secret Santa he did last Christmas. And so we sent them some plushes because they're big collectors. Uh, and they didn't have to do this, but they decided to give us a game in return. And so Terry hooked me up when we were at Portland. He actually gave me... Uh, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, uh, complete with the bongo drums. So uh, what a fantastic addition to my collection. Uh, I, I love anything weird controllers, especially Nintendo and, I mean, come on, bongo drums. Are you kidding me? These are great. So thank you, Terry and Tyler. Uh, they, they were basically the centerpiece of the expo there. Booth was right in the center and they had the AVGN van that says uh, Cockburn Industries on the side. Uh, and they're just great guys. So uh, thank you again, Terry and Tyler. Okay, so this next one's got a little bit of a story behind it. Last year, when I was at the convention, I wanted to pick up a ColecoVision system console. I, I, I wanted a ColecoVision and I saw a bunch the first day on Saturday, and I thought, well, uh, you know what? I'm gonna pick up some other stuff. It's kind of a big bulky system. I don't wanna carry it around. I'll wait till Sunday, pick up a ColecoVision. Well, Sunday rolled around, and guess what? They were completely sold out of ColecoVisions. Uh, and I was really bummed out because you just never run across ColecoVision. So it was my mission this year. I was like, one of the first things that I wanna track down and get was a ColecoVision, all right? So first day of the convention, Saturday, uh, I am scouring the floor for ColecoVisions, and there was far less out there this year, believe you me. It, they were uh, not easy to find, and with a huge convention floor like it is, uh, you don't know where to go. And I mean, it's like, one's way over here, one's right here, one's way over there, you know. So, um, anyway, I found one, or I was, I was, I didn't find it actually, I was coming around, it was a huge booth, big table, kind of a big L, and I'm coming around, and before I got to it, Mr. J. Dubious of Dubious Gaming uh, actually picked it up before me. So I hadn't got there yet. I hadn't seen it. So I don't know if you would consider that being caught slipping because I didn't even get there yet. Uh, but he got that one before me. He, I, I had seen him the day before and he said he was looking for a ColecoVision. And not that we were like competing for it, but um, uh, I knew he wanted a ColecoVision as well and he got it. So that was great. Um, and he got it for a great deal. Uh, he got it for like 60 bucks, which is a steal on a ColecoVision uh, in the condition that he got especially. So I, did, I missed out on that one. I move on to another booth and I see a ColecoVision there and I'm like, oh sweet. And there's this woman looking at it and she's kind of, you know, hemming and hawing over it, uh, whether or not she wants to get it. And eventually she walks away. I'm like, yes, I'm going to get this ColecoVision. Good. ColecoVision covered. And I, I go up and now I'm standing in front of the ColecoVision and I hear from behind me the same woman. She goes, I'll take that ColecoVision. Now, uh, if that isn't the definition of getting caught slipping, I don't know what is. I totally got caught slipping on that ColecoVision. So she got, that's two that got sniped out from under me. So now I'm thinking, crap, is there even any ColecoVisions left at this convention? Well, I managed to find one more booth that had what I think is the third and only ColecoVision of this whole expo. And I was like, how much for that? I don't care, I want it, give it to me. And guess what I got? A ColecoVision. 
And this thing is just in great condition. Um, I am so excited for this. In fact, I think, not that I'm competing with Jay Dubious, I think I got the better deal. So he paid 60 for his. I actually paid 67 for mine, but along with it, I got uh, six games all with their original manuals with it. So how cool was that? Let's go through the, uh, the games that I got with it. So I got uh, Donkey Kong Classic, right? Which I believe is considered the best uh, home console version of the, you know, uh, the, the, what is that, generation two, one? What generation is this? Um, so uh, you had the Atari, the Intellivision, ColecoVision. I think this is the best version. I could be wrong about that. Correct me if I'm wrong, internet. I also got Time Pilot, and I know very little about the ColecoVision, so I don't know if these are great games or what. Um, Donkey Kong Jr. Uh, Sub Rock. Venture. And finally, Zaxxon. Uh, and like I said, I got all the manuals with those games, for those games, and they're all in pristine condition. Uh, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Sub Rock, Zaxxon, Venture, and Time Pilot. Now, uh, my question for you guys is, what ColecoVision games should I get? Um, what are kind of the classics? I would love to hear your thoughts on that. I want to start my Coleco collection and I want to know uh, what are kind of the, 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 the must-owns for the system. So if you guys could help me with that, it would be much appreciated. Uh, oh, one more thing on the ColecoVision. This is crazy. I've never seen an AC adapter this big. Do you guys know what the AC adapter for a ColecoVision looks like? Look at that. For reference, here's my head. That's how big this thing is. This is gonna like break my wall when I plug it in. I definitely gotta put it in a, uh, a surge protector because there's no way I could hang this on the wall. This is ridiculous. So I thought that was really funny. Uh, that's what the AC adapter looks like. All right, now we're getting down to it. Finally, what y'all came here for, right? The old update on how the SNES collection is going. So I'm going for a complete set of SNES, right? And uh, that was the big thing that I was looking for at the, at the Portland Expo. I, that, that was what I saved up all my bones to buy some, uh, some SNES games. And I wasn't messing around this year. I came prepared to get the heavy hitters and that was pretty much all I wanted was the games that uh, you never see, the big ones. I wanted to knock a few. So basically, here's, here's my, my thought. You got uh, the, the SNES collector app and um, I forget which, there's a, there's a bunch of them, but the main one that everyone uses has a feature on it called Trophy Room. Uh, and you, could, you got two trophy rooms. You, you got your most rare and your most valuable. And what it does is it takes, uh, and it puts like mm, maybe 16 games in your trophy room, your top 16, and it shows which ones are your most valuable and which ones are your most rare. And I wanted to get at least two games in the most rare uh, side, right? Uh, and spoiler alert, I succeeded. So let's get into those SNES games right now. First, I got uh, Flintstones, <laughs> which you're probably thinking like, what? Is that a rare game? I just, I never come across this. This is based on the film starring John Goodman. Um, and I actually got that for a great deal. Uh, but you never see that around. So anyway, I picked that up. This one, I actually thought I had and then I realized I didn't have it. I have the manual, but now I have it manual end game, and that is the death and return of Superman, uh, which is a nice little beat em up uh, with Superman sporting his 90s mullet, which was uh, probably the best looking Superman ever created. Uh, this one I'd been trying to track down for a while, and that's Rex Ronin, uh, experimental surgeon. Now there was three, um, Three health games, health educational games. There was Rex Ronin, Bronchi Health Hero, and Captain Novelin. The only one I'm missing now is Bronchi Health Hero. Uh, so I'm very glad I got Rex Ronin. Uh, a buddy of mine who you may know from the YouTubes or Instagram, and his uh, name is John Riggs. He does rigged games where he hacks games and uh, puts his in his own graphics and such. Anyway, he was uh, selling some games, and I picked up Fun and games from him. This is a, another tough Super Nintendo game to find. This is this was up there in rarity because it's one of those games, not very good, 
but it's a game that no one ever got, so there's not a lot out there, uh, and it's very hard to track down. Uh, now we're getting up to the, the big ones, the creme de la creme. Uh, but before that, the last uh, uncommon game I got was uh, Ghoul Patrol. Now, if you don't know what Ghoul Patrol is, this is actually the sequel to Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Not as good as Zombies Ate My Neighbors, but... Um, Pretty neat that they made a sequel for that, and this one is actually getting very hard to find. So if you see this, snag it up now while you can. Uh, and before we get to the creme de la creme, I consider this a creme de la creme. This is a game I've been trying to track down forever. And, you know, I went to the convention with the thought that I wanted to get more repros. I only got one last year. I got Mega Man Wily Wars, and I wanted to really pick up some more repros. I didn't end up getting any repros except this one. And I got it from a good friend of mine, the Nintendo Doctor, Doc NES, Doc Ness, whatever you want to call him. He had a booth. He was making repros like crazy. He, he All weekend, he's just sitting at his booth, cutting stickers, putting in uh, the, the game microchip boards. What do you call them? Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, he's making games. He's stickering them. His booth was super successful this year. So congratulations to Doc Ness. Um, and he graciously hooked me up with this game that I've been searching for forever. Super Back to the Future 2. As you know, huge Back to the Future fan, got my Marty hat. Uh, what else, was there something else I got? I forget. Anyway, uh, love Back to the Future and I cannot wait to dive into this game. Been wanting to play it forever, so I'm super excited about that. Creme de la creme. Three, I got three creme de la cremes. First of which, it's a Taito game. Nice little uh, side-scrolling beat-em-up action platformer, I think. I don't know. I haven't played too much of it because it's super hard to find, but now I've got it. And that is Ninja Warriors. Ooh, ah. Great condition. Um, very happy I got that. What, what more is there to say? Ninja Warriors. That's a, that's a tough one. Tough one to track down. Another tough one to track down. And this one is rising in uh, rarity as we speak right now. R-Type 3, the third lightning. Nice little shooter, shmup, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, hard one, hard one to track down. And I got this, I actually uh, did a nice little deal. I got this with Ghoul Patrol and I did the, a bundle deal, haggled with them, great price, very happy about that. Last but not least, big one. Now, I went to the convention with the hopes that I might come home with Arrow Fighters. Well, I'll tell you right now, I didn't. I only saw, no, I saw two at the whole convention, but they were a little bit out of what uh, my price range, what I wanted to pay for them. One was actually complete in box. I wasn't even gonna get close to paying the price that they want for that one. Uh, but the one that was loose was a little, little too spendy, a little too rich for my blood, so I didn't get it. Oh, by the way, I got a Super Nintendo case. These are, these are, these are always cool, cool to get. But I couldn't go home without checking off another Grail game, Holy Grail game, for me at least. Uh, and this has been a white whale of mine forever. Probably the most pristine condition I've ever seen in this game. It looks like it's brand new. And that is Metal Friggin' Warriors. Yeah. Uh, whoa. <laughs> Metal Warriors. Look at that. Get, take a gander at that. Make a mental snapshot. I... Cannot believe I finally have this. I've been looking for this forever. Um, that's how I felt when I finally uh, had that in my hands and now in my collection. But that is it. That is everything that I got at Portland this year. Like I said, I wasn't messing around this year. I came there with some goals and I think I succeeded with the exception of Arrow Fighters, but that's okay. I'll track that down, uh, down the road. Um, but uh, got to hang out with some great people, a lot of cartridge clubbers, um, as well as some people that I saw there last year. Uh, and it was just, it was bigger, it was better, it was badder. And uh, I can't wait to go again next year to, uh, to continue the adventures at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Uh, and that's all I got, guys. So until next time, boyfriend out.